I'm loving that wallpaper behind you, Nina. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where did you get that from? Is it, is it the 70s? Did you get it from the 70s? Karen, I think it's a microscopic image of your jumper. <laughs> <laughs> it might well be. <laughs> this is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. Hello, everybody. Welcome, one and all. This is Sheer Isolation. I've just dropped my tablet. That was a good start, wasn't it? Ooh, that could be an expensive mistake. Could have been, I only, only bought it a few weeks ago. Anyway, uh, I'm John in Cricklade, and uh, Kieran is over in Trowbridge. Still, I'm still in Trowbridge. I've not gone anywhere. Uh, purpose of this show is to promote the local music scene across the west of England. Kieran, you, it looked like you had uh, an amazing gig at the, well, it was Monday, wasn't it? Last Monday. Yeah, it was brilliant. Revive Live, um, their, their sort of UK, national UK tour they're doing with loads of bands. Um, it was really fascinating meeting the bands and talking to them about how, like, the whole thing's structured, because effectively what they what they what music venue trust have done is they've been given a pot of money for cultural recovery or whatever and they've just blown it on doing some events and making sure everybody gets paid properly and the events are as good as they can be and our event was awesome it was absolutely fantastic um cannot say enough good things about it it just goes to show what can be done so superb night and which venue was it because i didn't recognize the room you were in but it was it was tiny tiny that was the pump ah i've never been in it You've not been in there? No. John, that is appalling. We have to rectify that. I don't know if it's that appalling. I do. I'm an hour's drive away. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, John, um, you can rectify it on uh, Friday the 18th of February because um, we booked Truck Stop Honeymoon to come and play the venue. And they were due to play with Frank Turner that night in Bath and obviously it all fell through um so we've asked them to come play and we're still going to do the gig with them just they're going to headline the pump instead rather than opening at the forum they're going to headline the pump but I mean that that's um that gig that you had I mean the, the music venues trust thing that that was part of a kind of a national as, as you mentioned the, the music venues trust is going all over the place and, and putting money back into the small venues so so well done for being on that list it, we were very proud to be on that list. Um, there's an awful lot of venues in the area that probably should have been on the list that weren't. And I think that's all to do with, you know, just seeing as opportunities and taking them. And we, we took it. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Every week we uh, introduce a, a new guest on Sheer Isolation. This week we are joined by Nina Casey, who's someone you know quite well, Kieran. Uh, so, yeah. So Nina is a um, effectively a DJ that I know um, who works out of the town hall in Trowbridge. Um, but he actually runs an organisation um, which I didn't really know a huge amount, a huge great deal about. But she's just told us everything we need to know. And uh, we'll be hearing from her in about hmm, five, six minutes time. But first off, we will play our first tune of the show. Uh, Kieran, it is your choice this week. What have you chosen? So uh, I had a couple of choices um, and I've gone with this. Um, it's a band called Frauds. Um, and they're sort of a, uh, an, Eng- an English band who've got members who live in Europe. Um, and they're signed to Alco Pop Records, which is one of my favourite record labels. And um, this is a song called Copenhagen, um, which off their last album called Long Spoons. Uh, and the reason I picked it is because they're going to come play in Trowbridge, John. They're playing in Trowbridge. Um, they came to us. They said, are you still up for doing a gig? And I said, yes. And they said, great. We're recording a new album on the uh, 14th of April. Can we come play for you 15th or 16th? So I've booked them for the 15th of April. They're playing it in Trowbridge at the pump. Um, and it's just a right, it's rock and roll noise. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, 
Straße ziffern. <lacht> Uh, tune is Copenhagen by a band called Frauds, who are playing in Trowbridge, you say the 15th of April? 15th of April at the Village Pump, at the pump. It's about this time of the show where we like to talk about product placement. He's looking around the room. He hasn't got anything with him. So I've got nothing to show you, John. Oh, that's not true. I have nothing to show you. Where is it? Ah, oh, I don't know where I've put it. Wait there, John. I'm coming back. It's like sometimes he just forgets he's on radio. I've got, you know, what I really love, right? I, I don't think a single is actually a single unless you've released it on seven inch vinyl. Because other than that, it's not a single unless it's been manifested in a seven inches of, of vinyl wax. It's not a single. It's just a song that's on the radio or whatever. Um, so this is a genuine single. It's Grandma's House. We've just done the Revive Live tour. And they had this merch desk and it said, um, you know, tips welcome, trying to raise enough money to go to South by Southwest. And, you know, so that, you know, British exports going across the ponds to give it to the Yanks. I thought what I'll do is I'll buy their single, their seven inch vinyl single and um, to send them on their merry way to America. So I don't know if you can see this, but it is a gold, golden seven inch vinyl. Um, and because they're like a punk band or sort of an arty house, indie, rocky punk band, it's um, it's five tracks. Five tracks on this seven inch, John. Five tracks is not a single. That's an, it's EP. an EP, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's an extended play. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, if any one of them ever was a single. It's probably just an EP. I don't know, but it's a seven inch single. Um, five tracks. I'm blown away. I mean, what do you have to play this at 33 RPM? There's no way you play that 45, surely. Well, it depends. I mean, if they're two minutes a piece, you've got two sides on a bit of vinyl. It's fine. I can see the lines and they're really narrow. That's so funny. Um, I'm going to assume they're 45s because otherwise it wouldn't be a single. <laughs> It'd be an EP. <laughs> yeah, and you can't you can't play a seven inch at 33. What are we what are we talking about here? That's just insane. That'd be a madness, John. Madness. <laughs> you don't get anyway, this kind of conversation on heart, do you? Anyway. So um, go and support grandma's house because they're gonna go to America and they're gonna be representing us. Lovely job. Thank you. For, and thank you for running what seemed to be all the way to Froome to pick that up. <laughs> Time for this week's guest. And um, we mentioned in the opening link, we're talking to Nina Casey, who is a uh, Froome based DJ who's doing a bit of a work out uh, in Trowbridge to kind of give something back to the community. And in particular, just give um, people, uh, particularly young people, a, a bit of a, an opportunity to experience some um, recording studios and DJing. Yeah, and I mean, her uh, sort of her moral compass and why she's doing it is, and how she's going about it is just lovely. So I, I really enjoy learning more about uh, what she does. So here we go. 
music has has always been a big part of my life my parents are classical musicians so I grew up um, doing violin you know orchestras I did ballet I did um, you know lots of shows musical theatre uh, that sort of was everything I was passionate about as I was growing up and um, I was going to go and do a performing arts degree but um, other things happened in life and I became a mum and after my second child I went back to you know I went to university trained uh, qualified to be a primary teacher um, so I wasn't doing much with music at that point I lasted about six years in education that's still um, a long time <laughs> yeah it broke <laughs> me a few times in between but you know um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've always enjoyed working with kids um, and uh, when I left there, I decided to go back to university and um, I did a master's in sound art. Off the back of my master's, um, I came up with my idea to create a company doing community music projects, uh, particularly with um, I was interested in adolescents or teenagers, you know, with mental health problems, kind of using music as therapy but in a, not in the formal way. Um, so from doing some research, I, it was, uh, I had various ideas for music workshops, sound recording, um, soundscaping, uh, all sorts of things, but it was the DJing that people picked up on. So, um, so I ran with that. Um, I started DJing myself about seven years ago now. Um, and I just, it's, it fills my passion for music, really. So with my teaching experience and the DJing, I wanted to kind of bring that together and really give opportunities to young people. Uh, you know, all the equipment's really expensive, it's, so it can be quite hard. And I wanted to be able to give that opportunity to those who might not otherwise have it. Um, so I started my own business, which was Love Sounds Music, and I worked with community organisations. Um, I worked with what's now Trowbridge Future in their yeah. youth clubs. I worked with Young Somerset um, in their young carers groups, providing DJ workshops. So I'd go out to their groups, take all my kit with me, set it up and let the kids have a go at it um, and teach them how it worked. So that's really sort of where I started. Um, and that was all going well until COVID hit, <laughs> which course. obviously meant I wasn't able to do anything anymore. Um, but during that time, or in fact, just before COVID came, um, I met with Tom. We discussed lots of ideas. Tom had similar ideas and values to me about making opportunities accessible. Um, and he's got a very different set of skills to me. So between us, we can offer a really wide range of expertise. Um, and so that's how we came together to create the new Purple Noise. Um, we found a, a location in Froome, which is where we're both based, um, but always, always had the town hall in mind. Um, so really pleased that we've managed to set up there as well. So yeah, that brings us right up to today. So um, obviously, Purple Noise for those who who don't know uh, is based at the track. Well, one of the one of the buildings or one of the uh, outlets, the studios is at the Town Hall in Trowbridge, and you have only just started having people in there, haven't you? It's only just begun, really. Yeah, we took the room on. It's it's taken uh, maybe longer than we expected to really get things up and running. Um, we are still finishing off a couple of bits in the studio. Uh, but within the next couple of weeks, those those should be all finished. It's, it's, it's kind of like a production studio, isn't it? So because I've been in there and you've got banks of keyboards and computers and uh, modulators and you've got a recording, a little recording booth for vocals. So if any people could literally come along with an idea and in theory, you can give birth to that idea. Yeah, so um, it's. It is set up as a recording studio and the thing that we're just finishing off is the vocal booth, which um, is going to be great once it's properly finished. 
Um, but we really, although yes, it is there, it is a functioning recording studio, really our main aim is kind of to uh, to use it more for education. So um, working with groups, um, with individuals, um, with schools, um, all sorts of things to provide some some different music education than is often available. Well, I mean, it's a really good point you've made there because we have talked about this before because the music education has really been removed from schools now. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like there isn't a value placed upon it. Um, but uh, I mean, you, know, we're, you and I were very similar, you know, hymn book here. Obviously, music is our, you know, emotional nourishment. It's what, you know, gives us meaning in, in this crazy world. But obviously, if that's not being catered for at schools, yeah. where are people getting these opportunities? And it turns out people like you come along and, and I can create these opportunities. So you'd be looking to hopefully work with schools and, and so on. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's going to take time to build those relationships. Um you know, I don't want to rush into anything uh, because I want to do it right. Um, we have got an exciting project coming up next month, working with a particular special school um, to see how they get on in the studio with us. And we're running some sessions and, you know, we'll all be able to learn from that about how to make it, you know, the best opportunity that it can be. Um, and certainly, I, I yeah, I fully agree with what you're saying. And if it wasn't for my music and um, and DJing and having that in my home, I don't know how I would have got through the last couple of years. It's literally been my therapy. A hundred percent. That's um, absolutely the same for me. You know, finally getting back out there um, and being able to be creative again. And, and it's relationships you make along the way. It's the people that you interact with, the people that you work with, the people that come yep. to your events. You know, all of those things add up to a much larger narrative and a story. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you do a thing, or you're, you're going to start doing a thing in Trebuchet Hall called Mini Beats. Um, it's a daytime event. Tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, so Mini Beats uh, was an idea that I had a few years ago now um, that I've started being able to um, experiment with now. And... I actually started running sessions last year in the summer. So the idea behind Mini Beats really is um, I know as myself that when you're a parent with young children, it's quite easy to feel isolated. It's quite difficult sometimes to feel like you can go out and really do anything. Um, and certainly you're not likely to be going out partying very much, <laughs> certainly not in the first few years. I don't know, maybe I'm sure some do, but um, so I really wanted to create a session that was aimed at mums or dads. I'm not just saying, yeah, uh, parents <laughs> with parents. young children <laughs> um, to come along. They can socialise together. The kids can have a dance, but they can have a dance too. It's a bit like a family rave, really. Um, I'm just spinning some tunes. Um, and it means that they don't have to just listen to nursery rhymes. And I know certainly when I was a parent, um, I didn't listen to nursery rhymes very much. My kids listen to whatever I listen to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, there's all... all absolutely a place for nursery rhymes. Oh, no, there's about, I was about to say to the words out of my mouth. Yeah, there's, there's space for it. Absolutely. But I wanted to offer something that was a little bit different. When people think of music, it's a very traditional concept that you pick up an instrument and you're you know, either forced to play it or you choose to play it. But um, digital music is very, very different, isn't it? Because it's all to do with effectively, in some form or another, a computer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think another area that is particularly interesting to me is... Um, the the still still a huge um difference between the amount of males and females that are involved in this kind of thing um electronic music and i think that the barrier to that is the technical side of things and although things are really really improving um i think there's still a long way to go and i personally i i think that we need to start when they're really really young kids making you know pushing the girls just as much as the boys towards using bits of technology and not assuming that it's the boys that want to do it 
yeah. you know, giving the girls that kind of encouragement that they can do it just as well. And when I did the master's course, I think there was 28 of us doing the course and three of us were female. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to speculate as to why that could be, but like, um, I'm, I'm really glad that you're on here giving a voice to that because uh, actually of all the people uh, we, we, we've met, actually, um, uh, it's also, I've only really met women producers, funnily enough. I've got a few friends that are doing mm. similar things, but I don't know what all the men are doing, but they're certainly not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could take that many ways, I'm sure. But actually, you know, well, that's, that's great to hear that. It is good to hear that, yeah. Let's uh, move back to Purple Noise because um, we've only got a few minutes left. So if people, um, if any uh, teens or any young people out there want to find out more about Purple Noise and get involved and, and book themselves a session or any of that, what's the best way of starting with that? Basically, just send us an email um, and either myself or Tom will reply to you. We do have a phone number as well. You can leave a message. We'll get back to you um, and find out what we can do to help you. If you know if you're a, a music or instrument teacher of some kind, you want to come and use the space. We're 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 really encouraging that too. So, yeah, by all means, just tell us what you're after, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Wonderful. And you you've mentioned this Tom a few times during the interview, but we don't know who Tom is. Do you want to give him a <laughs> want to big him up? <laughs> yeah, Tom is my business partner, um, and he he had uh, Purple Noise Studios before. This is what we've joined. We've joined together now to form a new Purple Noise Community Interest Company. Um, and he is much more on the um, he can teach music production and he knows how all the recording stuff works in the studio as well. So I do more of the DJing stuff and things around that kind of electronic music. But he's more on the um technical side of of making that stuff and what goes on behind that yeah sounds like you work well as a as, as a twosome then to offer yeah a wide good range. team i think yeah. <laughs> much so. we, we always um invite our guests to, to pick a, a track uh, you're no exception nina so what, what have you chosen for us okay um i picked this track because it makes me feel good every time i hear it and it really helped me through some of the darker times. So it came out um, last year, I think. This It's Mark Knight and Beverly Knight and the London Gospel Choir. Oh, cool. uh, everything's going to be all right.
the uh, song we've just played there is from the London Gospel Choir with Mark and Beverly Knight. It's uh, uh, everything's going to be all right. Nice and uplifting piece. John, everything is going to be all right. And just going back to our guest, uh, Nina, if you want to find out more information, just search Purple Noise. They're, um, they're based in Froome and they work in Trowbridge. Last week, Kieran, I, I optimistically um, and probably uh, a bit too early said that things are getting back to normal. The festival lineup is uh, it seems to be opening up and everything's going back to like it was back in 2019 before we had a, a pandemic on our hands. Um, this week, Forestry Live, who uh, put on shows for the Forestry Commission in West Bit Arboretum, they have had to announce already they uh, Jess Glynn has cancelled their performance. Not sure if that is COVID related. Um, just make that clear, but, but they they have early doors. I mean, this is not until like the middle of June. Um, they've said that Jess Glynn is not going to be playing at Western Bird. Oh, that's a shame. They do they do still have on, on the lineup for, for the coming year Rag and Bone Man, Keen and Madness. So those three are still on the cast to be playing at Western Bird this year. Well, that's um, fair enough. They're great acts. Yeah. Rag and Bone Man, that's going to be amazing under all those trees. Have you got any news yourself, Kieran? We've got um, Truck Stop Honeymoon, who were due to open for Frank Turner in February. Uh, they're going to play on the same date of the show that should have been at the Forum. They're going to play at the Village Pump. So if you like your sort of circus-esque, vaudeville, jazzy, loose Americana, blues-infused stuff, then they're right up the street and they're absolutely bloody fantastic. Um, husband and wife duo, upright double bass. He plays a banjo. It's brilliant. It's mad. It's crazy. Uh, it's so authentic, it hurts. Um, so there's that, I guess. That's news. I'm um, talking to Frank Turner. I did see that he has started to post up some different gig dates. What's going on yes. there? So those gig dates are specifically in stores. So he's doing like shows related to venues. So those sorts of shows are you have usually have to buy the album to buy to get a ticket to the show. So the whole point of it is to sell products. Um, I believe, I sincerely believe that Frank is going to score a number one. Um, th this is it. This is the one. This is the one that's going to happen. So I'm bigging up Frank Turner. His last album got to number three. The two or three prior to that got to number two. I predict he's going to hit number one. Oh, there we go. Kieran predicts a Monday Chriswell. There we go. That's, I'm not go. that old. I was going to say it's showing my age. I'm, I'm not from the 50s. Um, very quick look at some of the other gigs that are happening uh, around uh, in the next couple, couple of weeks. Um, there seems that there's more comedy. I mean, Cheltenham Town Hall has got loads of comedy coming up. So February 8th, Stuart Lee, 11th, Rob Beckett, 12th, Jimmy Carr. What a week for oh, stand-up oh, comedians. Well, look at that. There's also quite a few tribute acts um, in the area. So on the 5th of February, you've got an Alice in Chains tribute at level three in Swindon called Angry Hair, which is an amazing name. <laughs> um, <laughs> Under the Edge Arts on the same night on the 5th of February, you've got Dire Streets. I'm not sure who they're tributing, but um, no, nor I. Not, they should make it more obvious, yeah. name, really, shouldn't they? That's it. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things. You got Andy Bell playing in uh, Trevor John the Six. We covered on on the show last week, and uh, she drew the gun. Great um, female fronted band at the Fleece in Bristol on the tenth. If anybody wants to get in touch with us, email sheerisolation at gmail.com or visit sheerisolation.co.uk or go onto your podcasting streaming service of choice to find back episodes. We'll be back. Uh, same time next week with more guests and more music. So, Kieran, thank you for taking time out of your hectic week to join us. I know you're a busy, busy boy. Uh, thank you very much, John. I don't even know what I'm doing for the rest of the evening, but it's all going crazy. So I better get back to it. You get back to it. Well, I've got to head off as well. So, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll be back same time next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.